Hello, welcome to Ladies of Another View on Beck. We are excited to have Patty back. <laughs> Yay! I'm excited to be back. Thank yeah. you. That's she a nice warm in, welcome. She Aww. was in Florida for a week visiting kids and grandkids and sunshine. And but uh, we did have the nicest week of the year no. so far. I know. Oh, yeah. What a week to miss. You, you like <laughs> to feel like you're escaping the cold instead. <laughs> 70 degrees yeah. and yeah. sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 65 up here, 65, 70. And then That's you go down there on vacation, you come back with a head cold. So uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, from the grandkids. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, gifts yeah. that keep on giving. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A little souvenir. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and get started. It's kind of exciting. Um, it's, a, it's been a long week, let's put it that way. So it's yeah. exciting that today is finally Friday. Yeah. And we're, we got through it. We sure did. Yeah. But um, one of the things, I don't even know how to describe it. Mm -hmm. We had some problem up on the, up on the hill regarding Luke Simons. Mm -hmm. And um, love him or hate him, there was a process that didn't get followed. And that's what has a lot of people upset about this entire situation. Um, yeah. Evidently, he had told somebody uh, in no uncertain terms, and may have used an F word, um, that uh, he didn't need to, or someone approached him and told him to put his mask on in, a, in an area that masks were recommended. It was at the cafeteria at the Capitol. And he told them to, you know, go away, you're not my mother. And so then that started a firestorm. And I listened to part of the hearings yesterday, and the gal next to him had said that her blood pressure went up so high she had to go to the doctor the next day oh. just to, to check her blood pressure. And it's like, oh, come on, we're getting cancel yeah. culture right here in our own, in our yeah. own city, in our own state. Yeah. But um, anyway, so then they brought up a bunch of things from the past, from three years ago, that were never a written formal complaint. And I read through those letters, and it said, um, it was at, for a team meeting um, with staff, and it said they had various concerns about legislators. Mm -hmm. And so all of that is plural. So yeah. that means there's a whole lot more out there. And are they mm -hmm. going to open up every single one and investigate everybody based on today's hypersensitivity? I guess we'll have to find out. <laughs> I hmm. guess we probably have already found that out. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to guess. No. But... You know, I found out that in North Dakota, words matter too. Mm -hmm. And not what you say, it's how you say it, apparently. And you really don't have to have due process. And that ought to scare everybody that at the legislative level, you cannot get due process and have your side told so that you're, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty. And our legislature yesterday said no. We're just going to decide you're guilty. It's almost like, you know, we don't have a news media that'll sweep our dirt under the rug, and so we're going to hurry up and we're going to rush this through and get it, get over, get it over with, so nobody's going to talk about it anymore, and then we're going to stay in power and we're going to have a good time. Well, you know what? I wore my boots today, <laughs> and they're kind of more work boots, and I, d I figured well, out there's words, a lot of work to do. Well, words matter up there, and I think a lot of those legislators have a BS degree, and some of them even have a PhD, and that's piled higher and deeper, and that's what I got out of it. So Whoa, you go, girl. There you go. <laughs> She's filling it. So first of all, I just have to say I love Luke, okay? Um, I have had interactions with him, and he's been nothing but professional with me. Um, I was on No Apologies with Becker uh, several months ago, and he called me right after it aired and thanked me for what I had said. And I just, I really appreciate Luke. And it's such a shame to see what's happened to him. Mm -hmm. um, they're making an example of him. And this morning when I was out exercising, I was actually thinking of Bill Clinton. And I thought, you know. Wait, 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 wait. No, I really was. Okay. <laughs> Who does that? You're out exercising? Words here's matter. The, here's no. the thing. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Okay. Right. That's what I thought of. And I just thought, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that Luke has been put in this position where I'm not condoning what, he's, what he did. It was wrong. He's, he's a public servant, but he's a person too, okay? We all make mistakes. I've made mistakes. Um, since being on this show, I've done things that I've been ashamed of publicly because of that stupid mask that people want us to wear. Mm -hmm. But uh, he is, he should not have been punished the way that he's being punished. I mean, no. it's, it's so sad to me. Yeah. You know, I read the complaints that, and I thought, uh, none of this rises to the level of him uh, losing his job over. Yeah. None mm -hmm. of it does. And is he bumbling sometimes and awkward? Apparently so. I don't know him personally. But I thought, this is crazy. It's almost as if people's overreaction is an indictment against him. Mm -hmm. Because, so what if her blood pressure 
rose right that's not that doesn't have anything yeah. to yeah. do with the evidence that's her overreaction right. and I, I think a lot of people are overreacting and he's been the victim of well, that. Well, and, and you know, it, it's cancel culture in a form that I grew up around the kind of people and I've, I've, Luke has been on our show and, and just that bit of inter interaction with him, I thought, you know, he's a down home kind of guy for yeah, me. Yes. I grew up around those kinds of guys where that was normal speak. And if I, and the gal who testified and said, you know, she was testifying about how he had said, uh, oh, I'm glad your boss let you come to do this job. To me, I listened to that kind of stuff when I was, when I was in my early adulthood. To me, it was a compliment. It's like they were saying underneath that, the guy is saying, I really, you know, you're a strong woman. That's a good thing, you know, that you're able to, you know, talk with your husband and say, he says, heck yeah, you know. I guess in this case, it was her boyfriend, but you know, the, the guy. So I wouldn't have been offended by that. And I think there's a lot of women out there that you just kind of go back and forth. You just kind of teasing each other on a level that we grew up with that we thought it was just fun. Right. right you know, right. and yeah. in Luke's world, I'm thinking it probably still is. And I think that may be how he intended it. Yeah. So let me add to that. Okay. So I had four kids in four years. And so occasionally, an F-bomb would fly at our house. I won't uh -oh. say where it flew from. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Not you. I talked to my priest <laughs> one time, and I said, you know, um, I, you know, just, you know what, you have these kids, right? I said, what is it with the F-word? And he said, Mary, it's just a word. He said, it is not. He said, as long as you don't take the Lord's name in vain, he said, that's a problem. He said, but anymore, it's just a word. I remember when I was a kid, if we said the word suck or sucky, uh, we'd get our mouth washed out with soap and water. Mm -hmm. And um, now that, that word is on every show. It's, I've heard it in sermons in church. I've heard it on TV out of every politician. Yeah. And so the word suck is now turned into another word. Um, and so this word that starts with an F a lot of people use it as an exclamation point. And I'm not saying it's right. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying I don't know a single person that I don't know that hasn't used it. Well, mm -hmm. and you know, one more thing I'm just going to add in. They, they said that in their, in their uh, accusation of Luke that if it had the appearance of impropriety, that that was a big deal and that's why they could, you know, expunge him. And wow. it's like, you know what? If you want to talk about even the appearance of impropriety, can we talk about DUIs? Yeah. Oh, oh, can boy. we talk oh, about a few other things where it's Kirsten on the Basler? books? It's, it, <laughs> yeah, well, it's on, it's on an open record legal. I mean, if you want to start investigating the legislators, have fun. Because yeah. there's a bunch out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. That Open have all file. sorts of things. Yeah. And then, and then judge them based on today's hypersensitivity. Let's do that, shall oh, we? No. But they're all hypersensitive in the same way, so that makes it okay. I mean, if it's DUIs and you've all got them, well, hey, we're okay. We don't have to worry about that impropriety. Right. I mean, you're setting the example, and you said on the floor that we are held to a higher standard if we are a legislator. Well, you know what? You all better listen to those words then, and you better think twice about what you're doing. Hmm. I'm bothered Amen, by all the people that voted against him. Mm -hmm. You know, like, right. why were they so quick and my to district dogpile was split. on him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I can tell this story isn't going away. I know it's not. But um, anyway, we do have to take a quick break. So we are going away right now, but we will be right back after these messages on Ladies of Another View on Beck. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality.
Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. There's nothing more important than family. And at Prairie Rose Family Dentists, we get it. That's why we have more locations, more dentists, specialists, extended hours, pediatric clinics, and even emergency appointments. So you can always be seen. Book your appointment today at prairierosedentist.com. Prairie Rose Family Dentists. We are family. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Pub 21, your one stop for fun, drinks, and food. Our spacious facility provides COVID safe fun for you and all your friends. With nightly bingo and specials, you can be sure there's something to do for everyone. If you're staying in for the night, we've got you covered just across the way with Pub 21 Liquor. We have a wide variety of options, from wine to whiskey and everything in between. Stop in today at 1014 South 12th Street in Bismarck to see what all the buzz is about. You won't be disappointed. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Beck. We had quite the lively discussion <laughs> during our halftime break, shall we call yeah. it? Our first We're told break. to be quiet. The show is starting up again. <laughs> uh, we so didn't know it ended. Oh, it was yeah. still going on. Keep going. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, but we've solved a lot of the world problems. We, we did. We do We're on trying. breaks, yeah. that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. This next segment, we're going to hop right forward to Cuomo mm. over in New York. He's in all kinds of trouble, and it, it you know, it, sexual harassment, um, between sexual harassment and uh, having people die in nursing homes. I mean, where do we start with him? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, while all of that was going on, he had people removing things from the record that said that, you know, more people died than what they thought. He was busy doing the book tour and all the all the main channels on the news about what a great guy he was and how he was the champion of how to handle this thing. What a joke. Yeah. I think that people finally are waking up, if they haven't been awake yet, to what's going on. And uh, they're finally starting to see that the emperor has no clothes. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be an interesting process to watch. I mean, especially as we just finished talking about what happened here locally with um, Luke. You know, what what process will occur in New York? Will he go through something similar or will people just kind of ignore what's taken place? I don't know. Um, it will be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. I'll be surprised if he survives this. At first I thought maybe he was gonna get away with it. He gave a very lame apology for the sexual abuse accusations against him. He said, I'm sorry if my flirtation was taken the wrong way. Mm. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Did you read some of the accusations? I mean, he forced women to kiss him. Mm. Um, suggested a game of strip poker. Really? Maybe you shouldn't be governor if you don't get that that's inappropriate. How can you govern a state? And I want to talk about the media. Why weren't they covering this? Because if you pay attention to alternative media, of which we are among them, they knew about the nursing home mm -hmm. um, misinformation mm -hmm. and falsifying the numbers and what Como was doing. But he was supposedly this big golden pandemic Mm -hmm. boss of how he did such a great job and he did better than the other states but he hid the numbers and knowingly did so and his excuse was well um, Trump would have made hay with it you know he was just trying to make us look bad yeah. and the other thing now this is important the media like they're pretty incompetent it used to be that you would want to get the scoop you would want to get the story first here's one of his first accusers Lindsay Boylan she said, he sexually harassed me for years. Many saw it and watched. I could never anticipate what to expect. And she went on. 
This was a tweet in December. Hmm. USA Today said, well, yeah, that was kind of hidden in all Trump claiming the election was stolen. Uh -huh. like, seriously? Yeah. Right. What kind of excuse is that for reporters not to act on that? Yeah. But, you know, I will give this much to Cuomo. Seeing what happened with Luke Simons and drawing parallels, there were no sworn affidavits on anything that he was accused of yesterday. Nothing where it was a signed complaint. And that's criminal in my mind, that he has been, ex you know, he has been kicked out of our legislature, the only one in the history of our legislature, and there's not even a signed complaint. It's so wrong, it's just so wrong. But, you know, in Cuomo's case, have these, have these women signed a complaint, or are they just talking? Because sometimes you'll see women jump on the bandwagon. It's some kind of a movement where everything's sexual harassment mm -hmm. these days, too. So I will cut some slack to the men, because it's not fair to men, either, that it's kind of gotten overblown in some cases as well, right. I think. You know, this whole COVID um, this past year, so it, I really feel like it's shown colors, true colors, of our leaders. Um, so few have been willing to really represent the people. Um, it's been more about power grabs and um, just really gaining control of people. I don't know mm -hmm. if you agree well, with I that think, or not. I think but I do. I think what, what's happening is if they go against it, they're not going to make it to the next level or, you know, they're not going to get um, the favors. You know, they yeah. want to be looked, looked highly upon by those above them and they don't want to be kicked Absolutely. out for saying those words. So okay, but look exactly at Christine right. Ohm, okay? She is the only one that I know of who really took a stand, who was completely different from mm -hmm. everybody else. And I know that there are people out there who don't like her, mm -hmm. but there are so many people who are rallying around that woman because she had the grit within herself to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. She taught them how they should be living, but she didn't force it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I found something with Cuomo, and if you can pull up the quote that I wanted to share. So this was published in January, and uh, Cuomo threatened hospitals throughout the state that if they did not use up all of their vac vaccines, they were going to be fined. Okay, mm -hmm. and so this yep. is the mayor of New York City, and this was his response to what the governor was trying to do. He said, we need to listen to our health care leaders and health care workers who are saying, Give us the flexibility to vaccinate more and more people, Mr. de Blasio said at a separate news conference Tuesday. What they don't need is to be shamed. What they don't need is more bureaucracy. What they don't need is the threat of fines. And I think, I mean, this happened in January, but this is so telling and typical of what we're seeing from this governor. Power and threats and you do it my way or I'm going to punish you. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's what we're happening. It, what's happening right now is people are finding the courage to turn on Como mm -hmm. because um, the, the person who does the weather on Fox News and her in-laws both died. She, and she came forward in, in one of the nursing homes and she came forward and started to speak against him. And she received phone calls and emails from people that said, look out, look out. He has a lot of powerful people behind him that's mm -hmm. going to make your life miserable. Mm -hmm. And you could experience harm in some way, like your career or or whatever. And so I think now that more and more people are speaking up, they're finding the courage and, and everything's starting to unravel yeah. for him. Mm -hmm. But I think mm -hmm. he had a lot of power. Well, right. totally. And I actually love that because as people, we need to recognize that people do have power. I mean, our leaders do have power. They can use it and there is real threat. But the key is, is if we stand together, we have more power. Mm -hmm. We can withstand what they are threatening to do against us. And so I love that you share that, I mean, that is exactly what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're saying about Christy Nome. You know, when, yes. when a few people start to speak up and say what other people are thinking, then more people mm -hmm. find the courage. And then a lot of and times it's just the minority that's controlling everything because people yeah. are afraid it, to speak up. And okay. it's kind of what we talked about yesterday, just that probably the majority of people believe a certain way, but it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. And whether it's, you know, Look at what went on on the floor yesterday, and then I think of the segment we did yesterday about the top song in the USA. Oh my god! And <laughs> the the just the what it portrays, and how everybody watches those videos, and kids watch those videos, and the parents know they're watching those videos, and yet Luke Simon can make a snide remark that to him is just joking around, and some lady can say, uh, "I'm not not you know," and he, it's. Everything's upside down and inside out. It makes no sense. 
And maybe this is going to help us in the end. Maybe yeah. he could, you know, he, he, he took it for the team. And yeah. that could yep. be and exactly what and happened. And when you talk about unraveling, I think that I think there can some, be some things happen I from this. I think there could yeah. be some yeah. problems. So something we can learn from this and we can actually do is in regards to Luke, I mean, write your legislator representatives, especially if they voted to remove him. Let them know that you are disappointed in what they've done. And if enough people do that, I mean, our leaders need to know where we stand because they represent us, the people. And that's the only way that we're going to, I hope, bring about change. Right. 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 Yeah. So. And they have to know that, you know, more and more people are talking, these people will be primaried. And I think they need to pay yeah. attention to that. We, yes. we will send a message when we vote, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Well, we got through that one, I tell you. <laughs> Maybe. 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 We might even bring it up again in the next segment. But we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back after these messages on Ladies of Another View on Back. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. In southwestern and south central North Dakota on any given day at any given moment, a Dakota Community Bank and Trust customer is logging in or signing on to do their online or mobile banking. We believe that community banking can blend both the past with down-home customer service in-house and the future with modern banking conveniences and technology for our customers anywhere, like here or here, all while honoring our long-standing tradition of community-first oriented banking here at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Beck Communications is hiring. Beck Communications is seeking qualified candidates for plant technicians in our Wheatland, North Dakota location. Beck Communications is an equal opportunity employer. To view the job details, visit www.beck.coop. To apply, email your cover letter and resume to careers at bechtel.coop. Beck Communications, making connections that matter. Ever been in a cave before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the car! But how will we... The car! Your offer has been accepted. Ever bought a house before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the closing! But how will we... The closing! The experienced professionals at Superior Glass provide residential and commercial glass installation and repair services in Central and Western North Dakota. Superior Glass is your source for stained glass projects, mirrors, windows, touchless, and automated entry solutions. Stop by and see us at 3323 East Broadway in Bismarck or call us at 701-258-5600. Superior Glass, where you get superior service for less. Bye for now. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Beck. We're going to jump to our next topic, which is always a favorite, <laughs> the Mexican border. Oh, frustrating to yeah. say the least. Um, well, sadly, first of all, there was a car accident in California and it, it involved a, a Ford Expedition that had 25 or 26 illegal aliens in there. And what they do is they take the car seats out of these vehicles and then they just pretty much lay, if you've ever bought a bag of Cloverdale hot dogs, that's yeah. exactly how they fit them in, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and I love their hot dogs, by the way. <laughs> um, shout out, <laughs> Cloverdale. Okay. Anyway, um, that's how they lay them in in the back of those um, vehicles. And then they had cut down a portion of the fence and just drove right into America. Mm -hmm. 
And it's like, yeah. this, is a, this is what's going on. So sad as that is, there's also a lot of, um, and they're called illegal aliens. They're not illegal, illegal immigrants. Immigrants come to the US legally. And mm -hmm. someone pointed that out. Yana Myrdal, right here, one mm -hmm. of our North Dakota legislators had corrected me on that. So they're illegal aliens. Anyway, um, they're bringing COVID in. They're testing them for COVID. 108 of them tested positive this past week, and they've let them go into the country without any formal fracking. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody else, if you even talk to someone who they test positive, you're supposed to quarantine. Exactly. You know what? You're a healthy person, and you have to quarantine. Yeah. But we're letting people in that are testing positive for COVID, and they can go do whatever they want in America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. But yeah. everything is these days. So hey, it's just the Mexican border. That's the oh, next one. Yeah, you know, you know, it's it's interesting. I wish that I could have found it. I uh, saw an article that was talking about President Biden, and uh, just his reaction to both Texas and Mississippi in regards to how they're handling, um, specifically the mask issue. I mean, he was throwing a temper tantrum over mm -hmm. it and why won't these states listen to me like yeah. i'm the one in power and i thought actually you're trying to cross a boundary that's not yours to cross i mean the states have their rights yeah. and this is one of the things that i just feel so passionate about is we need to recognize the lines that are appropriate and um anyway president biden is continuously trying to step over his authority his rightful authority to do things and so sure. anyway I want to go ahead, if I may, I want to uh, um, jump forward to a video clip of the governor of Texas. Take a look at this. Two things, Brian. First, it, it obviously is not the type of thing that a president should be saying. Uh, but second, he kind of said it on the worst day he could have. Because the same day he said that, uh, in Texas, the Biden administration was releasing Illegal, immigrant, illegal immigrants into our communities who had COVID. The Biden administration was spreading COVID in South Texas yesterday because of their lack of constraint uh, of, of testing and, and uh, quarantining uh, people who'd come across the border illegally. The Biden administration uh, was exposing Texans to COVID. That is Neanderthal type approach uh, to dealing uh, with the COVID situation. But more importantly, Brian, is this. Uh, and that is, with regard to masks, uh, the, the change in Texas really wasn't all that much different from where we were before for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, we are still uh, strongly advocating uh, that every Texan follow the best practice. Where we are today is completely different from where we were this time last year when Texans and Americans didn't know how to deal with this for an entire year. Texans have learned the best practice, and that is to wear a mask, and we still strongly recommend that people do wear a mask. So he was responding because President Biden told him or said that Mississippi and Texas, they mm -hmm. were, it was Neanderthal thinking. Yeah. So I did a little bit of research on Neanderthals. Wow. Can't wait to learn. And would you believe that they thought Neanderthals were extinct um, 30,000 years ago? It's not true. Mm -hmm. They actually did a little bit of inbreeding with the human species. And so oh. therefore, we're all part Neanderthal. Wow. And now, I'm offended. Oh, God. Uh, right? <laughs> He's discriminating against Neanderthals that we all have a little bit of bloodline. And so he just absolutely offended the entire country. <laughs> There's and it's racial discrimination for calling us Neanderthals <laughs> yeah, that, and that we can't think right. Uh, and so that means we're not too white, so obviously there's a sexual undertone oh to all God. of it. I've got it figured out. It's racial, yep. it's sexual, it's, it's all of it. Uh, and we're I mean, offended. Let's put a mask on and let's keep touching it. Yeah, I mean, because uh, it keeps sliding what, down. Isn't that what did you think? I am protected. He needs I to keep go touching read the my guidelines. Mask. Have Isn't you ever that noticed that? Like even when they're on giving speeches on the floor and stuff, and they're always just touching their mask and pushing it up and yes. pushing it up. And it's like, with all the money you guys can yes. go through, can you not get a mask that fits you so <laughs> yes. that you don't have to keep doing that? It's just <laughs> weird to me. <laughs> Try to so get the proper it, size. For it tells him, me yeah. they probably don't put them on except when the camera's rolling, but that's just me. Well, you know, we have seen that. We've I seen know. When they take the masks <laughs> off and the I cameras. I what they need to create. I think I just came up with a business idea. Actually. Oh, no, don't say it. Someone might take well, it away from you. I don't know. You know how you have to go in and get fitted for a bra? <laughs> I'm thinking. Uh, I need to start a mask fitting business. There you yeah, go. There you some go. Serious money. Huh. Well, 
I have a granddaughter <laughs> that wore her mask this morning in the car, and I said, honey, you don't have to do that. But it happens to have on it the picture of her birthday party theme, which is the, oh. um, what do they call them, Among Us. It's a new thing with all these little dolls and stuff. And it's embroidered on her mask. And I thought, well, the president ought to have the great seal on his, I would think. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it would fit then. I, I don't know. Oh, gosh. But, you know. Anyway. It's all well, just... <laughs> I, we're, I, we're a little off, I think right? it's funny, though, that the governor said this is the worst day he could have criticized Mississippi and Texas about loosening up on mandates. Yeah. At the same time, he lets, releases all these illegal yeah. aliens that have COVID. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. what? how hypocritical is that? Like, I care about COVID, but not their COVID. You know, I'm guessing that there will be a statement that comes out that says something along the lines of this is Trump's fault. I don't know. Somewhere. I, I'm just thinking Somewhere that ultimately it. Biden will not take responsibility for what he's done and right. it's going to be Trump's well, fault. I'm funny. sorry. I'm super snarky today. I know. And so. Me and too. We, we are all over the place, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. This is a story. Um, my son actually went overseas to Italy um, hmm. through a, a high school tour and I had talked to the teacher. I was there for the parents' day. The kids and the, and the parents were there. It was a, it's supposed to, for the organization. Anyway, so I said, did you tell the kids not to wear anything that makes them stand out as Americans, like an American flag shirt or this or that? And he said, no. And so one young lady, she was um, 16, she said, well, why don't they like Americans? Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, because of President Trump. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I went to Europe twice 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and they hated Americans back yeah. then. Was yeah. that Trump's fault then? Yeah. I mean, it's so funny that I went 30 years yeah. ago, and they supposedly. But you know what? I've, I've um, read, Mark Stein wrote a book on this before. He said, oh, yeah, they hate America, but if they get a chance to go there, they jump at it, and right. they know all our songs. Yeah. They know everything about us, but, yeah, they hate America. Right, yeah. but getting back, yeah. everything is Trump's fault. Even things that happened 20 or 30 years ago, it's yeah. Trump's fault. Yeah. If it's happening next year, it's Trump's fault from the past four years. Well, so, just, just so it's clear, the fence that got taken down for them to have two vehicles go through, not just one. The one got away, the other one crashed. But that was part of the fence that was built in 2009 under a different president. It was pre-President Trump, just for the record. Hmm. And that's what they cut down. It must have been easier to get through for some reason. I huh? guess Trump I can't imagine. builds better well, fences. I, I don't guess. know. I mean, I don't know. Can we say that? <laughs> is that OK to say? I it's a border know. wall. It's not a fence. <laughs> So, and what, what is interesting as well is the fact that, you know, they're, they're not going to build the fence any longer, but they're going to spend 130, what is it, million dollars to million dollars. protect the Capitol, to have troops there. National Guard. National because Guard. Because they thought yesterday mm -hmm. they had a credible source that said that President Trump was going to be the president. He was going to be inaugurated yesterday by the people that follow QAnon. And it, they would take over <laughs> the Capitol. Which I don't. And they were taking yeah. over the Capitol. Yeah. So... Yeah, but that's Trump's fault. Yeah, yeah. Well, everything's well, of course. Well, of course, yeah. Of so, course. Yeah. Anyway, I don't what know. a waste of money. I, I well, actually wonder, I mean, I know that there's that source, but I was talking to a friend about it today. And uh, just this idea that the people in power right now, they've got to feel a sense of threat. I mean, even if it's not the whole Trump issue, it's just the threat that the people are unhappy with what's happening. Right. And so they need protection. Yep. And I it's think statewide, citywide, countywide. Well, Como did blame Trump for fudging the numbers because he said he would have used it. So like right. that's obviously but in the meantime, his he fault. Didn't, he didn't count the 15,000 people that had died in the hospital. They had, they had left the nursing home to go to the hospital and they died in the hospital. It was 15,000 people that Cuomo didn't count. Wow. Anyway, we're going to have to take another quick break. We'll be right after the, these messages on Ladies of Another View on Back. Howdy folks, it's the Cantaline Cafe. I reckon it's time you'll do for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Cantaline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a palm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, 
and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. Welcome back to Ladies Up, another view on Beck. Our Patty has been replaced by a surprise guest. <laughs> this just so happens to be my daughter, Sydney. Hello. And she is... Hi, Sydney. Hello, guys. <laughs> She's back. Beautiful. Um, getting some appointments, eye appointments, that kind of stuff, taken care of because she's going on spring break really soon. But uh, anyway, we just thought it was a good opportunity to talk about what's going on with college and COVID in college and kids in college and all of that uh, rigmarole. So Sydney, how has it been? Uh, it's been a year now. In mm -hmm. fact, this week it's been a year uh, with the college, mm -hmm. uh, with COVID, I should say. What, what have you learned from it or the good, bad, the ugly, whatever? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's crazy that it's already almost a year. It's gone by really fast. Um, you know, we never, we never thought it was going to last this long, and it's really sad because we missed out on so many things. And it was, I graduated in December from UND, and fighting Sue forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was just, I don't know, it took a lot away from us, and it's just, it's disappointing. I don't think I got the best education I could have for sure, 100%. And it's just, I don't know, it was really disappointing. I think, and I mean, I learned. To, I mean, we all we're all stronger from it, and I think we learned like how grateful we are for like our education and stuff. And it, you know, you realize what you have when it gets taken away from you like that. Right, so, kind of right. like it was taken for granted. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, can you talk a little bit about that transition period? I mean, I'm sure when things started to change, right. there was something that you had to do that you weren't used to, and right. how did you adjust to that? What was the impact? Yeah, I mean, because like right away it was right after spring break and. You know, at first it's like, oh, free time. I don't have to work for two weeks. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to be with all my roommates, you know, friends quarantining together. It's going to be so much fun. And then you realize, oh, it's not, you know, mm -hmm. So 14 days or two weeks turned into a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it was, it was crazy. I don't know. So yeah. how did, what were the first things that happened that you noticed were a big switch as far as, how you were going to learn right. or how so you were going to attend. Obviously everything's like switched to online, which our, our, our teachers did a very good job, you know, the best they could with trying to get everything online and so we could like have it, you know, our best way. But they also were very lenient that way too. And, you know, gradings were a little lenient mm -hmm. and it's like probably could have, you know, I mean, gotten a little harder, but you know, they wanted us to do good. And 
I, what I noticed was, you know, I try to stay in my room and like get things done, but then while you're, I'm sitting in my bed and I don't really feel like staring at a screen. I mean, I get headaches from staring at a screen, but now I have to like watch class, you know, watch my teacher. I, I was in kinesiology classes and he, I was in a like, basically kind of like a workout class, like showing you like how your muscles move during certain like workouts and like he was just, you know, sitting there doing push-ups and trying to explain mm -hmm. to us, it's like, well, I'm sitting in my bed at home, you know, how am I learning? But you know, it was just, it was really hard. And it's not like I can meet up with my classmates and like try and learn with them. You know, it was just all by myself and in my room, trying yeah. to learn the best that I could. So, so it's almost like lab work that couldn't happen. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah no, no hands on. You think hands of chemistry stuff. majors and some of that. Right. I mean, how did that even work? Yeah. Or being in music and trying to do a concert. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. Did you notice? Uh, were Were the students were they mostly? Um, did they follow the rules that had been set forth, or did you notice any rebellion that it had occurred on campus because they didn't want to stay I mean, locked down? Like, yeah. Like I don't. I think everyone did like try and like stay home. The mask thing. I mean. Most of our classes were online. I mean, this summer they, I had like half my classes in person and then two weeks before school, oh, they're all online now. And so mm -hmm. it's like, oh, and also I'm paying the same tuition yeah. to sit at home, not use any of the facilities. I used one classroom a week my last semester oh. of college, but yet I'm paying the same. I, I, I don't know, I just didn't really think that was fair. But also, you know, they need to pay the bills too, but. Great, but think about yeah. the kids that are there, like, because we also have a freshman. Her mm -hmm. younger brother is up there as well. And we paid room and board for him to sit in a room. Mm -hmm. He got the meals and board, but he could have very well stayed at home yeah. and done yeah. it. You know, but you, know, you don't want to take away that college experience from these kids. For sure. Right. But as a freshman, in a new situation, you know, five hours from home, it, you know, I was glad that you were there. And I know you guys didn't really see each other that much, but yeah. um, it's... It's just for those freshmen, or how about like the oldest kid in the family? Say this is your first time, mm -hmm. your first kid in college, yeah. and they sit in a dorm for an entire yeah. year, and yeah. you pay, because room and board is, well, college is about nine grand, and room and board is about nine grand. So it's, that's where the $18,000 wow. comes from. And so I basically just paid nine grand for it, well, and I you know, helped with your rent and stuff too. So we just blew $20,000. By the way, I have three kids in college, so let me rephrase that. I just blew thirty. <laughs> thousand dollars for three kids to sit in their dorm rooms and apartments in the last year and yeah. i have another child going to school, to college next year and yeah. sydney's going on to chiropractic school right yeah. yeah and like one more thing i wanted to add to like with all the classes being online it was so hard because obviously a lot of us have jobs and how easy was it for me to just not go to my classes and pick up a shift because obviously none of us or like it's harder for us to make money now, like job or it's better now, but like back in March, April, none of us could work. And now when our classes were online, you know, students were taking advantage of like not being able to go to class and like picking up that extra shift. So it's like, then you're working all day and then you want, you get home and it's like, do you really want to watch those lectures? Not really. Mm -hmm. And then you do, and then you don't retain it all. And so I think at least I like was working a lot more because I didn't have to go to class and stuff. So that was nice, but also, again, didn't get the best education. And so I, I should clarify for our viewers, you are paying for some of it. We're helping where we can, and you have loans. So when I say that $10,000 per kid, that's um, what the schools are getting for your kids to just sit mm -hmm. in their dorm room. Uh, that, yeah, it just, just drives yeah, me crazy. So sad. Yeah. Yeah. So, I haven't been following the college scene. I know what the mm -hmm. school system looks like now for mm -hmm. kids to go to school. So are things getting back to normal? Or is, yeah, what does I it mean, look like Yeah, I mean, I've graduated now, so right. I'm kind of like not on campus as much. I live close to campus, but um, not on it. But I know like, because my brother has a dining hall, they now open the dining hall. You can sit with your friends before you would um, have to sit by yourself in the dining hall. And it's just like so sad because that's where you would see like your people that you maybe had a similar class with. You don't live with them, and you're like, oh hey, sit down, have lunch. Like that's how you build your relationships. And like even people I know now, like I might not be best friends with or like friends, but like I have those memories or like I had those interactions my freshman year to like build relationships with people and like have, you know, like friends mm -hmm. in different ways. And I mean, I'm glad now it's things are starting to open up more, but even just like, they don't have a union either just because mm -hmm. that got taken student down. Union. Yeah, yeah, student mm -hmm. union. So they're building that right now, but it's just, they definitely, I just don't know how they socialize. I mean, luckily I know my brother, 
he his floor gets together a lot on the same earlier little like dining not dining area just like common area I think students are taking advantage of that but still it's like how they're not meeting as many people you're paying to have this like experience and it's right. just kind of getting ripped from you yeah, right yeah, and right. college is so much more than just the oh learning. yeah, I you mean, learn such a big part of the social yes, aspect. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. Do you think, and you really don't have much to compare it to other than your first few years, but was there a difference because there's always this thing about cheating? Oh God! <laughs> and yeah. what what difference did COVID make in that? Did you see a lot of increase in students I mean, when saying, you're sitting, "I'm done"? Yeah. When you're sitting at your computer, you have all your available sources right there, and I mean, Google's a very good like source to use. And like you know to look up something quick, but our teachers did use like lockdown browsers, I know, and so, but yeah, it definitely made it a lot easier for students to oh quick look up an answer, you know, and it's like right there you're not if you're tempted to have those um, options available, like it just makes it that much harder to learn too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure, mm -hmm. wow. And did you have any professors? I know when I had a son that was at UND. He had a professor he couldn't understand. And right. did, did you mm -hmm. have Luckily, that? Luckily, I didn't. Mine were all um, good. But yeah, and definitely, I know some people probably struggled with that a little bit. Just Well, in a lot of them, um, like the older generation teachers, I know literally have no idea how to use these Zoom things. And it was so hard on them to have to just pick up and try to learn these Zoom things. And just for, you know, they didn't know how long it was going to last. but. You know, it's difficult, right. difficult for them, too, to have to learn all this technology stuff. So yeah. in wow. less than 30 seconds, what advice would you give to any incoming freshman this next year? Um, I would just say live it up the best you can. Like, you'll, ha you'll still have a great experience for sure, but, you know, it uh, might be a little different, but, you know, just live it up. You'll have a good Perfect. time anyways. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for joining us, and thanks for standing in real quickly yeah. like that. We have to take a break. We'll be right back after these messages on Ladies of Another View on Back. There's nothing more important than family. And at Prairie Rose Family Dentists, we get it. That's why we have more locations, more dentists, specialists, extended hours, pediatric clinics, and even emergency appointments. So you can always be seen. Book your appointment today at prairierosedentist.com. Prairie Rose Family Dentists. We are family. Deciding how to promote your business can be hard. Visit the professionals at Dakota Promotions and Printing and let them help you through your struggle. Dakota Promotions provides promotional items and apparel from corporate gifts to team shirts and everything in between. With quick turnaround times and friendly service, they are your best choice. And best yet, you're shopping local. Visit them online at dakotapromo.com or stop in their showroom at 320 West Main in Mandan. Dakota Promotions, delivering promotions just for you. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. 
Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to SummersMFG.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Beck. We decided to keep Sydney for our final segment. This yeah. is always a fun segment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so what we wanted to talk about is basically spring is right around the corner. It felt like spring this week and it's gonna get cold and we know that it's gonna get colder before it gets hotter again. We get that, but it's calving season and that has always been such a mm. joyful time in our yep. place. I mean, it's, it's the hardest work imaginable, mm -hmm. but just the um, the joy of what you see coming to life, like God is giving life, and it's just amazing. So take a look at this picture this morning that Kenny had sent me. This is, Aww. you can't even see the baby, but there's a baby. It has the green <laughs> ear. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so just having a little breakfast. Usually Aww. we have about a foot or two of snow out there, but then take a look at this next one, you guys. Here, he's Aww. helping a brand new baby, and this is a baldy. Aww. Actually, Amanda, the gal that works out front here, mm -hmm. her brother sold us the bull that oh. um, that we got that calf out of. That's so, so cool. Isn't that amazing? But he lives down in Mobridge. But mm. anyway, it's just always such, it's it's spring, it's yeah. life. It's a promise of that life is gonna mm -hmm. go on. Yep. yep. You said it's a baldy, explain that. A baldy is a, it'd, it'd be a cross between an Angus and a Hereford. Hmm. Now, our ranch has had nothing but um, uh, Angus for like the last 40 years or so, 40, 50 years. And then all of a sudden, Kenny thought, you know, let's cross these up a little bit because in F1 baldy, you have the black hide, but then you have the white face. So that's mm. a baldy. Okay. And um, anyway, so it's like the first, we got a couple bulls and um, a Hereford bulls. You breed them with the Hereford. Anyway, um, the neighbors, ah, there's a bull in your pasture. There's a bull in you, you know, it's like yeah. nobody knew where these Herefords had come from. So <laughs> huh. that's where the little baldy comes from. Aww. Okay, okay. So I'm reminded actually of when I was a little girl with, because um, I was raised on a dairy farm and uh, there was a heifer that was struggling to have have her calf and my dad had come and got me at the house and he put me in the corner and I watched him help deliver that calf and I was probably seven or eight when that happened but it's something I never forgot watching life come into this world I loved it and I just I love spring I love what it um, just the rejuvenation that it gives to our our souls and it's just that oh, winter is leaving feeling mm -hmm. newness I just I love it and yeah. I think too that we'll get a little more fresh air mm -hmm. you know kind of put this COVID crap behind us hopefully yeah. but let's take a look Candy sent a picture of her Aww. little puppy <laughs> he's so cute Aww. so isn't he adorable so that's Pachi and that he's a Papillon dog Aww. so just tiny little puppy but we got him actually he was born in the spring last year and um, actually, I don't have him any longer, um, but that he belongs to my daughter. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a sweet puppy. Aww. So yeah. cute. It yeah. is. Yeah. So I don't cute. know. It's just the promise. The promise of, of, of that there is a future. Yes. That, you yeah. know, so many people have kind of, you get yep. the winter blues and then the COVID blues and the depression that has gone along with it. But when you drive down the road and you see the baby calves or the baby horses yes. or the flowers, you yeah. know, that's right around the corner too. Yeah. yeah. Well, and even the leaves, you know, when they're popping. I just, I love when the buds, they start coming out and you're just like, oh my gosh, it's yeah. coming. Yeah. yeah. No, and like me being in Grand Forks, obviously very cold up there. I always like compare it to Bismarck and I'm like, whoa, it's 20 degrees warmer in Bismarck today. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. But I mean, the first day it warmed up, like me and my roommates said to each other, we're like, oh my gosh, like the sun is shining. I feel so good. Like, yeah, it's life is great. Yeah. And it, it's, an, yeah. it's amazing what like the sun and just, yeah. you know, the warm, warm weather and everything. And then it just reminds me of you know, happy things, happy yep. things ahead for sure. Yep. And I think some of it is the vitamin D. Oh yeah. yeah. Did you, and did you study that a little bit about? A little, um, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Here and yeah. there. <laughs> well, maybe we know we're coming out of the dark winter and right. it's, it's yeah. great. It's great. Yeah. But, and you know, um, when I think of calving, there's something, okay. I have a sister that died a few years ago from Parkinson's and she was an old soul, what I call an old soul. And, 
she knew things. She just knew them. And she, she, would, she would say things to make me think. And she'd always, as soon as she said my name, she'd say, Carmen? And it's like, here we go. It's going to be a zinger. <laughs> and then she'd say, what about? And then she'd put something out there. And one of the things that I have meditated on is just the, the promises of God and how faithful he is. You got sunrise every morning. It doesn't matter if it's winter, summer, spring, fall. But, and calving season is the fifth season. I'll say that. But the, she said, Carmen, in the 80s, she told me, we're one generation too, re, too far removed from the farm. And I thought, what does that really mean? And I have thought on that for now how many years? And I believe that when you calve, it's, it's new. It, it's like all the lost sleep, all the running around in the muck and sli sliding through it sometimes and, and helping those, those, those cows that are struggling. And you know that calf is in there and just wants to live. And you're just out there and you're going, I can help with that. And I'm sorry, I wasn't going to cry. But when you can help to bring life into the world, even if it's planting flower seeds, and if you just meditate on the beauty and the miracle that it is, and that life is so precious, and I hope that I, I just, it's such a refreshing thing. And we just need to get more of that yeah. in our society again. Absolutely. We need to be grateful for sure. Beautiful. I think that's too, like with COVID, I think people have became a lot more grateful for just like the people they have with them, around them. I know I have for sure, just Aww. very happy. Yeah. Great. So we have about 30 seconds left. Candy, do you have a thought? Um, final thought is, I mean, we, we have a beautiful weekend coming and it's gonna change again. Let's enjoy it. Let's soak up some vitamin yep. D and look forward to spring. Yeah. That's right, that's and right. Here's a little old wives tale. Um, Kenny has kept track of this, and he says, when it's foggy, in 30 days we're gonna get the rain, because we're really short on moisture right now. Um, it's, it was really, really bad foggy today, so in 30 days, we're going to get some rain. But we're going to have to talk about that another time because we are done for the day. Thank you for joining us. See us next time on Ladies of Another View on Back. See you.